Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and Steve Donahue and I are reading The Odyssey by Homer for our book club choice of the month, for the month of August. And we're reading the Robert Fagel's translation. This is my edition. And uh, The Odyssey is a, a book that Steve reads uh, every year in August, uh, much like how he reads the Iliad every year in June. Um, I've read the Odyssey a few times. Um, most recently, I read the Emily Wilson translation um, when that came out a few years ago. And I'm really uh, happy that we're reading the Fagel's translation. The Fagel's translation was uh, my first encounter with the Odyssey. And in many ways is um, the, the translation that I use or ha have used um, as a baseline when I when I read it, the Emily Wilson translation, um, comparing it to the one that uh, I feel um, most acquainted with, uh, almost as if the Fagel's translation is like my um, original that everything else is compared to. Um, and I did something a little different, uh, something that I hardly ever uh, do, which is research. I did some preparation. Um, so before I started uh, reading the Odyssey, uh, this week we, we read books one through six. Um, I read some uh, adjacent books. So I read The World of Odysseus by M.I. Finley uh, with an introduction by Bernard Knox. And if you're reading Homer in translation, you're prob probably going, going to see Bernard Knox's name quite often. And for good reason, uh, he's a terrific writer of Homer. Uh, he's like uh, Ion from P Plato. Uh, he he can really welcome you and give you a, a, a good understanding um, of the world of Homer and um, why it's not so intimidating. Uh, so th that's the introduction by Bernard Knox. The world of Odysseus, I had a much different expectation um, than what the actual reading experience was. I thought it was going to be like a street level view of what it was like to live in the time um, that the events take place in the Iliad or the Odyssey, uh, almost like a uh, Xena the warrior princess episode where you're seeing people's uh, daily lives, um, how they wake up, what, what they're doing when they go to town, what they do for work, um, how they're traveling, what they're wearing, um, what are they eating, th things like that. Um, instead, it's uh, just a very close examination of the text. Um, some, and one of the reasons that um, those kinds of details that you can find in Xena the Warrior Princess um, can be so difficult to um, determine in the works of Homer, or the time period of Homer, um, is something that, that I get confused about um, more than I should. And if, if you're a dilettante or a hobbyist, um, the, the way that I kind of read these ancient Greek works, you can uh, either be confused or have a misunderstanding of when all of this stuff is taking place, uh, as if ancient Greece was a single point in time or a, a relatively short period of time. Um, like the notion that um, uh, Aristotle and Plato and Socrates and all the playwrights and Herodotus and Thucydides and Homer were all walking around the Agora together, which isn't the case. So the, the time span is so much more vast than I legitimately think about when I think about this time period. And Herodotus said that uh, Homer lived 400 years before his time. And the events that take place in Homer are 400 years from the time in which Homer was writing, um, roughly. So 800 years, 1,000 years, the events of uh, the Trojan War would have been happening. It's incredibly distant past. Uh, 
the work of Homer uh, to Plato was already an ancient text. And the question of authorship had come up, uh, or is still a constant uh, debate. One of the uh, discussions or scholarly discussions that come up in uh, th this work is how much truth can you extract from the works of Homer as um, uh, factual examples of what time, what, what life was like at that time. There's not even any uh, definite um, example or e evidence um, of who wrote the Odyssey or the Iliad, um, whether it was one person or two people or many people. It nearly sounds like no one's even sure if it was written down at all. It's that, that enigmatic. And the other, um, and fascinating, and r really, um, it covers, uh, so sort of like sections like the wealth and labor that you can find in the Iliad or Odyssey, uh, household, kin, community, um, uh, bards and heroes, uh, Homer and the Greeks. Um, and then I read the uh, Aristides plays, so Agamemnon, the Libation Bearers, and uh, the Eumenides, the plays by Aeschylus, that's how you say it. Um, and the Iliad is the story of a war. It's, it's a war poem. Uh, the Odyssey is a story of a man coming home from war. So we, you have these two huge themes that um, through human human existence uh, are everlasting uh, war and the effects of war um, and uh, Agamemnon the, the Aristides plays is a very different uh, so you have Agamemnon who's in the Trojan War and now he's going to go home to his loving wife Clemenestra and so it's a very different kind of story. Uh, Clemenestra wants to m m murder Agamemnon. Whereas in uh, the Odyssey, uh, Penelope uh, is looking to be rescued. Uh, all she would want is for Odysseus to be coming home um, from the Trojan War. And the Trojan War went on for 10 years. And now... Ten, uh, ten more years uh, have gone by. Uh, Agamemnon's gone home and been murdered. Uh, everyone else that was able to has gone home. And there's no sign of Odysseus. And there's a question looming. Uh, is he alive or dead? Now, if, if you haven't read the Odyssey and you have an idea of what the story is going to be, maybe you think it's um, like a seafaring uh, ocean adventure. There's um, Odysseus trying to get home and Poseidon uh, trying to stop him. And so there's going to be big storms and shipwrecks and things like that. There's plenty of that in the book, but you'll be very surprised um, with how the with how the poem starts, even every every time I read it, I'm always uh, um, a little off balance because it's so surprising. Uh, instead, we have the gods having conversations and being in council um, over what's going on um, in Ithaca and and Odysseus. Uh, Odysseus is uh, trapped. On an island with uh, Calypso, who's like this um, god-like uh, person, woman, and there's an unfortunate uh, circumstance going on at Penelope's house. Um, Penelope is Odysseus's uh, wife, and they have a son, Telemachus, and Telemachus is a young man. Uh, he's a teenager just on the brink of adulthood, but not quite an adult. And then we have these suitors, and it's the most preposterous 
situation. Um, and the, the way in which all of this happens is, is equally ridiculous. There's a whole gang of men um, staying at Penelope's house, um, eating all of their food, killing all of their cattle, drinking all of the wine, using all of the grain, biding their time um, to eventually be selected, um, at, at one, of, one of these men selected um, to marry Penelope. And Telemachus, uh, everyone involved is unhappy with the situation. The suitors aren't happy, Penelope is not happy, uh, Telemachus isn't happy, the gods aren't happy. Um, everyone's trying to figure out what to do. Um, Penelope inadvertently got herself in this situation by um, trying to bide time with all of these uh, kind of grubby um, men looking for a wife. She says, I'm going to finish this loom. And when I finish the loom, that'll mark end of my relationship with Odysseus, I'll accept that he must be long dead, and I'll marry one of you. And when Telemachus uh, comes up in front of a crowd and, and to say that this is wrong, um, th these men shouldn't be in the house, the rest of the town, like, listen, let's, let's all agree we need to kick all these guys out. Uh, one of them says, well, all of this started with Penelope in, in this loom, and we found out that she's unraveling it at night. And this goes on for chapters. Um, it's not until book five where we really get back into the story of Odysseus. Um, up until that point, that the next seafaring adventure is Telemachus, um, urged by the gods, um, goes off into the ocean looking for evidence. He decides he's going to figure out whether or not Odysseus is alive or dead. He'll come back. Uh, Penelope's father is still alive and like, kind of around, um, which is unexpected. Um, they, they, they kind of turned to him and said, like, can't you sort some of this out? Like, Penelope's your daughter, uh, but he couldn't figure anything out. So, I did want to, when I started reading uh, the Fagel's translation, I did think about how much I liked Emily Wilson's beginning of uh, the poem. And so this is Emily Wilson's first line. Tell me about a complicated man. And I, I think that's just one of the best opening lines uh, for, for this poem, um, amazing. Um, Fagel's does sound more almost eternal or classic. Uh, like I said, I, I imagine when I read the Fagel's translation, it just sounds so inspired. So uh, it begins, uh, sing to me of the man, muse, the man of twists and turns. Uh, but there's something just so clean and drawing with Tell me about a complicated man. When we finally get to Odysseus and the things that you would expect, um, if, if you just have a cursory knowledge of um, what is going to be in the Odyssey, it's magnificent. Uh, and this is from book five. <laughs> so Poseidon, who... Um, has had a grudge against Odysseus and uh, has been uh, keeping him in the ocean. He can't, he can't get home because the gods, because Poseidon's upset with him. Uh, Poseidon is in Ethiopia uh, accepting uh, bribes from the Ethiopians. <laughs> um, but her, uh, Zeus has sent Hermes down to Calypso's island and has said, uh, to Calypso, uh, put him back in the water, and he, he needs to get back to Ithaca. Uh, we need to kind of sort all this out. Odysseus's destiny is to get back uh, to his wife. We, we all know that. And that's early on in the book. Uh, we're told that 
Odysseus needs to just get home and settle all this. Um, Poseidon comes back from uh, Ethiopia, realizes uh, Odysseus is bobbing along on this raft, and Poseidon just blows up and smacks him with like the god of all storms. And I love seafaring stories. Uh, I think uh, the Odyssey is one of the best, but um, like the the, uh, the Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner or Toilers of the Sea by Hugo or Robinson Crusoe. Um, those kind of um, out in the open ocean stories I love. And so we have this big storm. Uh, Poseidon says, still my hopes ride high I'll give that man his swamping fill of trouble. With that, he rammed the clouds together, both hands clutching his trident, churned the waves into chaos, whipping all the gales from every quarter, shrouding over in thunderheads the earth and sea at once, and night swept down from the sky, east and south winds clashed, and the raging west and north sprung from the heavens, roiled, heaving, breakers up, and Odysseus's knees quaked, his spirits too, numb with fear he spoke to his own great heart. Wretched man, what becomes of me now at last? I fear the nymph foretold it all too well. On the high seas, she said, before I can reach my native land, I'll I'll fill my cup with pain. And now look, it all comes to pass. What monstrous clouds, King Zeus crowning the whole wide heaven black, churning the seas in chaos, gales blasting, raging around my head from every quarter, my death plunge in a flash. It's certain now. And it goes on for a couple pages, this magnificent, uh, big thunderstorm like a hurricane being dropped like an anvil on a single man on a little raft uh, that's book six uh, that, that was book five book six uh, Odysseus is about to start uh, his odyssey uh, he lands on a strange land and meets uh, people of course the first person he meets is going to be a princess and it's going to go on from there but Really, really good stuff. Um, uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hearing what Steve has to say about uh, the first first six books of uh, the Odyssey. I think it's, it's just a very strange beginning. It's, it always feels like uh, it's not the beginning that I would expect. Um, it's still really good because it's placing all of the parts for... The dramatic payoffs so we, we have tension in Ithaca we have tension with the gods we have uh, tension with um, uh, Odysseus out at sea uh, we have this uh, family relationship between um, all, all these family members of Penelope and, and her father and Penelope and uh, her son and her husband and uh, it, it's a really wound it, it, it becomes like this wound up dynamic and how all that play, is going to play out with the suitors and uh, Poseidon being all mad at uh, Odysseus. It, it, it is really well, very quickly, um, the tension is just kind of wound up, ready to just burst. So there is that. Um, <clears throat> looking forward to hearing what Steve has to say about uh, the first six books of the Odyssey. If you're reading along, I would love to hear uh, your thoughts as well. Uh, if you have anything to say about anything that I had to say, please uh, let me know. Uh, so please uh, leave a comment if you would like. Thank you for watching and take care.